Welcome to lecture four. In this lecture, we will quantify the heat transferred at constant pressure as enthalpy, and we will apply this idea to chemical systems. This lecture will be broken down into three parts. The first part, we will define enthalpy. In the second part, we will examine what enthalpy means in terms of quantifying the heat capacity of a system. And finally, we will apply enthalpy to chemical systems. By doing so, two laws will be presented, Hess's law and Kirchhoff's law. We've looked at a lot of reactions at constant volume when discussing the internal energy of a system. However, a lot of chemistry happens when systems are held at constant pressure, like those open to the atmosphere. We will now focus on this more common case so that we have convenient quantities we can measure in order to be able to make predictions as to the properties of these types of reactions. It is convenient to use state functions to quantify systems because of their path independence. Currently, we only have the internal energy as a state function to define the energy of a system. The oxidation of fat is an example reaction where measuring the internal energy with a calorimeter isn't easily accessible. Consider the oxidation of tristerin. It is an exothermic reaction where the surroundings do work on the system. Remember that calorimetry, our primary tool for measuring the energy change, will not directly quantify the internal energy. This is due to the fact that the energy lost from heat transfer is restored due to the work performed on the system. This is not a constant volume process. The main issue with the tristerin example is that it is a process that occurs at constant pressure. Let us now examine the first law of thermodynamics at constant pressure. The first line simply has the first law of thermodynamics written with heat at constant pressure and work at constant pressure. Rearranging this expression so that the heat at constant pressure is on one side and the change in internal energy and work are on the other side of the equation, evaluating the work integral, and then arranging initial and final terms together gives the heat at constant pressure is equal to the final internal energy plus P external times the final volume minus the internal energy at the initial state plus the external pressure times the initial volume. Since the internal energy, the pressure, and the volume are state functions, we will use these to define a new state function. The enthalpy of a system is defined as H being equal to the internal energy U plus the pressure P times the volume V. A change in enthalpy, like a change in anything, is the final state minus the initial state. The definition of enthalpy can be substituted in for both the final and initial cases. If the pressure is held constant between both final and initial states, for instance, set to some constant external pressure, then we get the heat transferred at constant pressure. This is a quantity that is easily measured with calorimetry. For example, the coffee cup calorimeter can easily perform this measurement since it's open to the atmosphere. Recall the problem that we started with. We had a chemical process where both work and heat transfers occur, and we're looking for a convenient way to measure the energy difference between the initial and final states at constant pressure. This wasn't a problem when the volume was held constant since no expansion work is possible, so we can measure the energy change by measuring the change in temperature of a substance with a known heat capacity in thermal contact with the process. What we have done is a simple rearrangement of terms to combine the internal energy and the expansion work into something we call enthalpy. We can write the change in enthalpy in a more general form as delta H is equal to delta U plus delta P times V. If we can assume ideal gas behavior, then we can substitute PV for NRT. This provides an alternative way to quantify the difference between the change in enthalpy and the change in internal energy. For example, the size of NRT for one mole of an ideal gas at 25 degrees Celsius is about 2.5 kilojoules per mole. As we will see in the following example, this difference isn't large. However, it is significant when gases are involved. 